Next on Worcester News tonight, the school committee is set to vote tomorrow night on the district's bus contract. Some parents say the current system isn't working. Plus, burnout is now recognized as an occupational phenomenon. Some doctors say it can have a major effect on your health. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. A cool day in central Massachusetts and it could get even cooler tonight. There is a chance of frost conditions with temperatures as low as 36 degrees. Let's get a first look at our local forecast for more. Hey there, good evening. I'm meteorologist Pamela Gardner. Across Worcester this evening, it's going to feel like fall, cool and crisp, and we stay that way for the rest of the night. Overnight tonight, already dropping into the upper 40s by 11 o'clock, a clear sky, and overnight lows will be in the low to mid 40s. But in some areas, some of the suburbs, some outlying areas could reach the mid to upper 30s, such as Jaffrey, 36 degrees. Patchy frost possible, but in Worcester in particular, staying just a touch too warm for it. Boston 47 degrees. We have more 40s to the south and to the east, but uh, it could be a frosty night across western Massachusetts and even across northern parts of New England. Tomorrow afternoon, we slowly increase the temperatures, upper 60s to low 70s across central Massachusetts, and the gradual warming trend continues for the weekend. It's going to feel more like summertime with heights nearing 80 degrees. Our next rain chance doesn't move until next week and specifically maybe for the first day of fall. I'll show you all the details in your 10 day forecast. Worcester School Committee could vote as early as Thursday night on the district's transportation contract. Some leaders say Worcester should run its own system, while others say they should keep the contract they have. But some parents say the current way is unacceptable. Our Chandler Walsh is in Worcester with more. Chandler. Olivia, the Worcester Public Schools currently has a contract with Durham School Services to provide transportation for students, but the contract is up next year. The district's only new bid option was also from Durham, so the decision now is to stay with the company or run the district's own bus company. Alerts for late buses aren't new to Nick D'Andrea. He says his daughter's school bus was late every day last year. 163 days, the days that they weren't late, they weren't on the bus. So when they were on the bus, they were late. DeAndrea created a Twitter account for parents to notify each other of bus delays. He says bus operator Durham School Services needs to step it up. We call the schools. Schools like, you know, you need to call the bus company. Bus company's like, oh, let us let us get back to you. And then, you know, by that time, we're already a half hour. And, and in some instances, the bus, ha bus is come and gone. This week, Worcester School Committee will vote on how to proceed with the school bus service. One would, uh, vote was to um, move forward to run our own bus company. And then uh, one vote was no to award Durham the contract for two additional years. School committee member Molly McCullough says the service issues with Durham are a problem. But she says in a statement, my concern about moving to self-op for the beginning of next school year is not having the proper infrastructure in place and not being able to get it done in a timely fashion to run effectively. While McCullough is in favor of giving Durham another contract, others disagree and say a self-operated system would save millions of dollars. DeAndrea says giving Durham the contract would be awarding them for late buses. Durham has not earned it and the bid that they proposed doesn't, doesn't provide any change. DeAndrea says having an app to track the buses would also be helpful. The district hopes to have this up and running next month. In Worcester, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Starting April 1st, single-use plastic bags will be banned in Worcester. The City Council voted 11-0 to 0 on an ordinance at Tuesday's Council meeting to ban lightweight single-use checkout bags. The ordinance will not include banning plastic bags for things like prescription medication, produce, and meat. It will also be up to retailers whether they want to charge customers for other bags provided. The decision will be back before the Council for final action in two weeks. 
In an effort to keep residents safe from Triple E, Westboro's Board of Health votes to cancel all nighttime activities. Westboro is at critical risk for the virus. The board voted on canceling all activities on school and town owned outdoor property after 6 p.m. The requirement is effective today. They will revisit the requirement at their next board meeting in October. The WRTA introducing a new online reservation system at their monthly forum today. Representatives from the Transit Authority are looking for members to become part of its test group. Today's forum was held at the Worcester Senior Center. The WRTA is hoping to get more seniors involved. The online trip reservation system will allow riders, those who choose to, uh, to book their trips via an online portal. Seniors also had a chance to discuss any issues they currently have with the WRTA and looked at ways to fix them. Massport's new CEO visits the Blackstone Valley Chamber of Commerce Wednesday to encourage businesses and community members to use the Worcester Regional Airport. Lisa Whalen says she wants local businesses and city and state leaders to persuade airlines to come to Worcester. Whalen says right now a majority of people still choose to fly out of Logan Airport even if they live closer to Worcester. She hopes the airport's recent marketing campaign will bring in more passengers. We're here today to talk about uh, getting people to choose Worcester, whether it's for business or for their personal travel. We have so many options, and the cost and convenience of flying out of Worcester makes a big difference for people here in central Massachusetts. Massport has made $100 million in infrastructure improvements to the airport since taking ownership over a decade ago. UMass Memorial Medical School is hosting its Takes Care Week. The goal is to help medical students prevent themselves from becoming burned out. Doctors say the condition is affecting people nationwide. Our Gretchen LaRosa joins us in the studio with more. Gretchen. Olivia, in recent months, healthcare professionals have actually recognized being burnt out as a medical condition. And they say chronic workplace stress plays a significant role. Being burnt out is not a new concept. But it's now officially a medical diagnosis. Students at UMass Medical School are examining a concept some people experience often, being overworked. When the oxygen thing comes down, put it on yourself first, then help others. That's what we got to start doing as, when it comes to wellness. UMass medical professionals say people could be diagnosed with burnout if they're feeling exhaustion, no energy, or mentally distancing themselves from work. You know, helping people be aware of their own uh, selves and t how to take care of themselves, uh, really important. Students and professors suggest saying no to stressful tasks and focusing on mental wellness activities can help combat being burnt out. You know, you, you've got to be able to find that balance, what works for you as an individual, what works for you as a professional. This week, UMass Medical School is offering a Take Care Week with ways to reduce stress and maximize mental health. Organizers say people should not be afraid to reach out for help. I don't think anyone should feel uncomfortable in admitting that they're having hardships. Uh, we all face struggles and a lot of us kind of bear it internally because uh, that's kind of part of our culture is to kind of soldier on. But that's just really unsustainable and is like a huge part of the problem. Dr. Michael Hirsch says putting yourself first is important, whether it's taking a walk or spending a few minutes outside. You know, everybody's got to find that and grab onto it and make sure that every day they're carving out some time that's for them. Now, professionals suggest practicing soothing exercises, perhaps taking a cooking class, or even reaching out to peers for support as ways to cope with being burnt out. In the studio, Gretchen LaRosa, Worcester News Tonight. An apartment complex in Worcester settles a class action lawsuit filed on behalf of a former tenant. According to the Telegram, plaintiffs argued that Edge improperly handled security deposits and built illegal stipulations into leases. More than 500 people who lived in the building between June 2016 and June 2019 are expected to be eligible to file a claim. The Edge has agreed to pay $550,000 to settle the suit. 
Grafton Middle School students are helping animals in need. James and Nathan Richard followed Hurricane Dorian closely, worried how it would affect their grandmother in Florida. They say when they heard about displaced animals in need of new homes, they knew they wanted to do something. They're collecting donations at their school for items like food, bowls, collars and toys to send to shelters with displaced animals. We love pets and like um, like I would feel like bad or oh, if any if my pet got hit or my pet was displaced or my pet had to leave to go to a new area. It feels really good knowing that we can at least somewhat help these all mm -hmm. these animals and it just it's a really good feeling knowing that some of these animals are gonna stay alive or at least be a bit more welcome or more comfortable. Donations will go to Brandywine Valley SPCA in Delaware. They're sending displaced animals to 15 shelters in Massachusetts. Raising awareness of women's rights, a Brazilian artist paints a mural on WPI's campus. Using graffiti, Pedmela Castro painted a mural of Abby Kelly Foster. Foster was a major figure in the 19th century women's rights movement. Castro says it's important for arts to be a part of every field and area of study. I asked people from here to suggest me a woman and they, incredible, they suggest me these incredible women's rights activists and abolitionists and I saw that it was perfect to be in this wall. WPI is hosting their Arts and Sciences Week. The mural is in the campus's Salisbury Lounge. A new Wallet Hub study ranks Worcester as one of the least fun cities in America. Worcester ranked 161 out of 182. The study looked at 66 key metrics ranging from fitness centers per capita to movie costs to average open hours of breweries. Wallet Hub defines a fun city as a place with a little bit of everything for everyone. Boston was ranked 38th, Providence ranked 87th. Becker College receives $1 million in assistance to create the new ASA Center for Digital Learning. The research center hopes to pioneer significant advances in digital learning and promote career exploration for students. Becker and American Student Assistance says the center will be a space of media development, allowing students to work on a variety of projects. To basically be able to create and study how kids as early as middle school learn in the digital space. So it can be a game. My hope is that it's going to be fun. Our students are so excited. This will be part of their game studio class, working with their faculty. It's approximately 45 students. It's both for a class, but also just for real world experience, trying to get that experience so when I graduate, I can get right in the door. And the center is on Becker's Worcester campus.